Hello, it's Scott Manley here. A few weeks ago, Starliner returned to Earth after its short test flight in space. It landed at the White Sands missile range on airbags, and that allowed people to immediately get around it and get a good look at it. Now, one of the things I get asked about this is, why does Starliner look so much cleaner than SpaceX's Dragon? And not just SpaceX's Dragon, many other capsules including the Apollo capsules that returned from the moon and the hundreds of Soyuz capsules that, of course, are the backbone of the Soviet and Russian human spaceflight program. And the simple reason for this is that Starliner uses a non-ablative material for the back shell of its spacecraft. Of course, the reasons for that reason are far more interesting because those involve a whole bunch of engineering trade-offs. So generally, for spacecraft re-entry, ablative heat shields are going to be much lighter. They're made of like a composite material which includes a polymer that when it's heated, it breaks down and releases gas that provides a protective layer and leaves behind a porous carbon matrix which also acts as a protection. Non-ablative heat shields, like those used on the space shuttle, those don't break down during re-entry, which means they're easier to reuse, but they're typically heavier because they have to be thicker. And also, in the space shuttle case, it was definitely harder to work with. They would lose tiles and break them all the time. So Boeing's Starliner uses a, an ablative heat shield for the main area where it gets the most heating, the base that is handling the deceleration. And then it uses a non-ablative heat shield on the back shell, on the top. The area which is mostly uh, hidden, it's on the leeward side, it's protected from a lot of the uh, re-entry heating. And of course, having a non-ablative heat shield means that reusing it is going to be a whole lot easier. And they don't really have to worry about refurbishing the burned up ablative heat shield because they actually have to eject that to make room for their landing bag. So that's being ditched anyway. They need to build a new heat shield for every flight. They also need to build a small portion of the back shell, which uh, covers up the parachutes and various other deployable hardware used during the landing. So why doesn't SpaceX do this? I mean, they have a capsule that they want to be reusing. They would probably prefer not to be completely stripping off heat shields. And indeed, they do reuse portions of the heat shield, as I understand. But this looks like a pretty gnarly process to clean this off. Wouldn't it make sense for SpaceX to have some kind of non-ablative material on their back shell so that they don't have to spend a whole lot of time refurbishing the capsule? There aren't actually differences between the front and back heat shield on the Dragon. The main heat shield is made of a material called Pika-X, that's phenolic impregnated carbon ablator, X meaning the SpaceX version. The back shell heat shield on the Dragon is made of a material called SPAM, SpaceX proprietary ablator material. And I think this image from Pauline Acklin for NASA Spaceflight just shows you the difference here. You can actually see uh, around that hatch there how thick the material is on top. Now, this was a, a Dragon 1 test. It's also where they tested some of the, re, uh, the non-ablative tiles that are going to be used on Starship. So I think one of the main reasons why SpaceX stayed with ablative was that the angle of the sides of the capsule here, right? So... If you look at the Boeing Starliner and the Orion as well, they have very uh, shallow angles on the side of the cone, whereas SpaceX, they chose a more like gumdrop shaped thing, which has a much steeper angle. Also compare it to the Soyuz and the Shenzhou. The steeper the angle, the more heat flux rolls around the side and burns the side of the capsule. And obviously, Starliner and Orion are going to get way less coming around the back. And another important factor here is that all these capsules steer through re-entry by using an offset center of mass. That means they kind of enter at an angle, and that lets them adjust uh, their trajectory by rolling the spacecraft. You can see that the Dragon sitting in the water doesn't float perfectly upright because it has this offset center of mass. And if you look at the recovery photos, it's easy to see that the back side of the capsule has been exposed to way more heat than the front side and is therefore much more discolored. So anyway, the shallower angle of the sides lets Boeing get away with a reusable heat shield. But that can't be the entire story, because if you look at the Apollo capsules, those have the same angle as the Starliner, and those look really beat up. 
The main difference here is that these are coming back from the moon, so they're coming back with higher speeds and higher temperatures. It's so hot that instead of just the gas touching the side that's causing the ablation, it's the fact that the gas is so hot that it's shining like the sun. And that light that is coming from that is enough to damage the heat shield on the backside of the spacecraft. On the leeward side of the spacecraft, the thermal radiation is where most of the heating is coming from. So for the Apollo spacecraft, on, on top of the heat shield, they actually put this reflective foil, this like mylar, that would reflect most of the heating to a point, and then when that was burned off, the heat shield underneath would, would work. And so you can see patches of this foil still there on some of the images. You can also see, of course, that the backside of this, again, is more heated than the other because the spacecraft had a natural angle to it so that it could steer through the atmosphere. And not all the Apollo capsules went to the moon. This is Apollo 7. And you can see that the back is much more intact. There's much more of that foil remaining because it hasn't been exposed to the same level of heat flux because it's only come from orbit. Similarly, this is from the Apollo Soyuz test project. Again, again, looking a lot more intact after its flight to space. It's also worth noting that the fact that most of the back shell heating comes from thermal radiation from the plasma is the same reason why the space shuttle is white on the back and black on the underside. Black because it will be absorbing heat via convection and re-emitting it via radiation. Finally, those of you with long enough memories will remember the Mercury program and the Gemini program. And those were very similar in design. Yes, they had a conventional ablative heat shield on the bottom. On the sides, though, they had these metal shingles which were made from a high temperature nickel alloy. The nose section that was straight, that was made of beryllium. This was back while they were tr still trying to figure out how to do heat shields. Presumably this was heavy compared to what ended up on Apollo. Underneath this there was another layer, an insulating layer to protect the actual spacecraft underneath. And this design apparently originated uh, in the manufacturers who were familiar with building aircraft. And specifically, these shingles were originally developed for lining the interiors of like jet engine exhausts where they would have afterburners. So the shingles were naturally black, but uh, anything painted on it would sometimes wear off. This is a shingle from Steve Jurvetson's collection showing the, uh, the, you know, the paint being burned off. So Gemini was very, very similar in its design, right down to having the, you know, the same materials on the side and on the nose. But the Gemini spacecraft would be NASA's first that had a, an offset center of mass that was designed to give the control over re-entry. That would be, of course, essential when they were returning at the much higher speeds required for the moon. Gemini 2 also had some really cool footage of re-entry from what would be an astronaut's point of view, except this was an uncrewed test. The th Gemini 2, though, was the first orbital capsule to be reused and reflown. So this capsule after landing, it would be recovered and then refurbished for the Air Force's Blue Gemini program. So it would be relaunched on a Titan 3C. That was it sitting on the top. Underneath it was a boilerplate of the manned orbiting laboratory, which in fact in this case was just a propellant tank from another uh, Titan bolted to the trans stage to actually give it the capability to go into orbit. Now the capsule didn't actually go all the way into orbit. The Gemini was detached uh, before stage three fired. They would actually have retro rockets to separate them. Uh, and then it fell back to Earth and is of course now on display. And now finally, let's take a quick look at Orion. So Orion has previously flown and it flies with uh, these non-ablative tiles on the back, very similar to the lunar heat shield. The difference is that unlike the space shuttle, they're going to coat it in a silver foil, which will reflect, I guess, it'll help with thermal control in space and also help with uh, deflecting heat during re-entry. So anyway, I know it was a simple question to start with, but my mind went off and wanted to talk about a bunch of other things. I'm glad you wanted to come along on that voyage with me. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.